Hi, welcome to my channel, A Girl, A Game, and A Goal. My name is Didi. I'm the girl of the channel, and the game we'll get to in a minute, but I want to talk about the goal, which for this series, which I'm calling Play With Me From Afar, is remote gaming. Because right now in the time of COVID, we are not able to get out there in the world. We're not able to go to the local Panera and have a game night, or even have people over and just like hang out and chill and play a bunch of games. So how do we get our gaming fix on? Well, there are a lot of games out there that lend themselves perfectly to remote gaming. And so I'm gonna share a bunch of games to this series, which I think are perfect. And I'm gonna show you the basics of the game and I'll show you some of the ideas behind how to play them remotely. And then if you can get a bunch of friends together and you can get on Zoom or Skype or maybe Google Meets, you can play. And if you're really adventurous, you might even try your hand at streaming on a platform such as Twitch or on like YouTube Live so that you can even have a bigger community and you can reach a lot more gamers out there that are stuck at home. And so uh, this series is going to do just that. It's going to inspire you to get out there and play some games remotely. So now let's take a look at the game. The game in today's video is called Blocks. B-L-O-X-X -X, exclamation point. And so this is what the player sheet looks like. And one of the key things about um, remote gaming, and I might say this in every single video, is that it's got this independence about it. So every person can just go online, find this, or you find it, and then you email it to your friends and family who are going to play, and then everyone just prints out a sheet. And from there, you're golden. Now, this game is actually pretty hard to find. Um, I tried to buy it myself. I have played it with another stream and will be streaming it soon on my channel. So I figured, let me just show you the different components because everything's out there. If you go on to BGG website, BoardGameGeek.com, uh, you're going to be able to find what you need, such as this image, right? The other thing that they provide is this set of images, which are the dice. The dice which you would need. Now, if I can't buy the game and I cannot play the game, well, you know what? Yes, you can because you can be creative like I have and I've bought some standard, you know, big old chunky dice from, you know, like Amazon or something and some stickers and I've pretty much printed them out. Now, if you don't want to do this, can't do this, and that's all good. What you can do is you can put two different regular colored, you know, regular dice. So like get a get yourself a six-sided die, a blue one and a red one. Um, on this sheet, you can download this and print this. You can put blue and you can put red. And then what you can do is just put one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you can share this on the screen, or you can do that, then send it to your friends, scan it in or whatever the case is, right? And then they can do this, which is the other go-to thing with remote gaming and these type of games is that you laminate. So you're not wasting a ton of paper, which means you need a bunch of these. Dry erase, the board gamer, remote player's best friend, it seems, uh, during this time. So you can also find ones online that are lighter. So that you're not wasting a lot of ink if you do decide to print them out. And so this one also could be found on Board Game Geek. It's one of the images that are there. And so you have options, right? So I figured I would show you it. Now, how do you play the game? I'm going to do a really quick, quick, quick overview. Um, each time you're going to roll the dice, you'll have an active player. Now, this is a little bit uh, different with the stream if you do a stream um, because you have a chat. So you have to kind of be creative with that and make a poll. But here's what you do. If you have people that you're playing with and you're all on Zoom, one person will be the active player. And when you roll it, they will choose to pick one of these two shapes to draw. If they choose this shape, then you can get this shape. You could also possibly choose to draw that shape. So what makes a difference, okay? well. If you look at this, and especially this one, it gives you that Tetris vibe. 
So this is exactly what it's like based around this idea of Tetris. So think of these shapes as coming down and landing. And you're trying to, again, like Tetris, fill up the rolls. Of course, nothing's going to go bing and disappear because we're talking about paper here, right? But that's what you're trying to do. The only thing that it's not like Tetris is that if you create a hole, you cannot tuck a piece into. And so that's the, the difference here. And I'll show you in a minute a real quick example, but let me go over the rest of what's happening. So if you'll notice that on some of these or on each one, there's a circle. You're trying to get those circles to land on these numbers so that you can earn them as extra points. Okay. Then there's the colors. If you fill that row up completely, you get bonus. If you're the first one, you get the top bonus of four. If you're the second one and after that, you get the bonus of two. If you're playing with a lot of people, you can say the first three, the first four, depending on how many that fill up the, the green will get the four. The rest, when they do fill up the green, will get the two. So if there's any gaps that are not filled in, they don't get those points. And basically, you keep rolling and rotating the active player. So let me show you what happens. If I roll these two shapes and I'm the active player and I choose to take this one. So this one has three X's and then a circle, right? And so you can turn and flip the shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it so that over here I've placed X, X, X and the circle. Okay. Now. I've gotten those two points because I was able to circle the two points. Perfect. Now, that was the one that I use as an active player. Everyone else can choose to do this. And when they choose to do this, they are allowed to also have that circle. So they can put this on their board. Again, rotate, flip, however they see fit to place it on their board. But let's say it doesn't fit and they prefer to have this to maybe make some structure. They can take the one that the active player has taken, but they will not get the privilege of the circle. That would stay an X for them. So there's the difference there. Okay. Now, going back to what I said about tucking stuff in. If, for example, let's say we had that one there. Let's just keep with that one. And it's, it's like a Z shape, and I did something like this, right? And, you know, I'm just going to X them out because I'm not trying to get all crazy. There's this little hole here. If on the next roll, I don't get anything that will fill that hole, then what happens is, I, if I want to, I can place, let's say this long skinny one, to get the three but now this is dead to me so use some other kind of indicator that it's dead to you just to keep track of what was filled by a die and what was filled by being open or even just leave it open completely I don't know if that would be distracting to some people and then you keep going um, tucking in so if you had something where you picked the shape and you did this and now you got an L, you cannot bring the L and pass this little piece. So an L would have to stay like this. It couldn't slide into there. So that's the only thing different here about tetris -y aspect of it. But basically, that's the game. You play, so if you're remote playing, then there's one person that is holding the die. They roll for everybody the active player and you make yourself a little list if you have this it's perfect you can be like okay Tony's first D is second you know Bob is third Jill is fourth etc and then just keep track of your active player that active player makes the initial choice then everyone else again can use the secondary one with the circle to get those bonus points or the active players without the circle. It's an X as, as it would. So when does play end? The minute that someone reaches right here. Even if it is just one little square that touches the top, game is over. And that's it. 
you roll, you play, you have a conversation, you talk to each other, and you have some fun. Now, how do you score? Well, you keep track as you go. So when someone scores a color, uh, you can decide depending on how many people. So maybe I say, you know, okay, two people. So the first two people will get the four. The other two people could get the two if they fill out the green. And then the orange, and then the blue, and then the purple. And so, depending on what you got, so let's say I got the green, and then I didn't get the orange fast enough, or the blue fast enough, but let's say I got the purple, then you would circle all the ones that you get. So that would be 4 and 4 is 8, that would be 12. And then all the circled numbers you would put here. And then what would happen is that over here, you would have to take a hit for anything that wasn't filled in. So this is what I was saying, if you leave it open or you wanna show some other kind of designation that this is an open spot, probably open might be a little bit better. And um, you can just put like a minus because that's gonna be a minus and that would be here and then that would be your grand total. So basically that's it, this is blocks. Hey, so what'd you think of that? Do you think that's a game that you would play remotely with your friends, family, anybody? If there's a game out there that you think would be perfect for remote. In either case, leave some comments down below. Let me know what you thought of the series. And also if there's a game that I should check out that can be done remotely. And then click subscribe. Because I'll be doing a lot more of these videos showing games that can be done remotely. And if you're looking to find me, have a conversation, ask some questions, I'll leave all my social medias down below in the description box, as well as my Twitch stream and a couple other links to some streamers that do board games online so that you can come and play with us. And so if you've enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to learn about. And don't forget that Board gaming is not a spectator sport, so grab those dice and play. And until next time, go out there and play some games.